Hi, this is Zach Chappell. Welcome to the Modern Web Podcast. I'm here today interviewing Bill, and uh, we're going to be talking about training. Excellent. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you guys do. Uh, I'm part of the Oasis Digital Angular Bootcamp training. If you've seen the gigantic banner that's still being dwarfed by the cavernous space that we're all in, uh, that's the one up on the wall, at the Angular Bootcamp. Um, I joined with them, I guess it was a little over two years ago now. Uh, I'm an independent developer, consultant, uh, based out of the St. Louis area, but I work all over the place. And uh, they came to me um, because I'd, I'd made a little bit of a name for myself as someone who'd gotten into Angular fairly early and was doing a lot of cool stuff with it. Um, and they had been doing similar things for a lot of their clients. Uh, they're primarily a software development shop. Um, that several of their clients began to ask them, like, hey, you did great work for us, and now we've got 200 more developers in the basement. Can you right. come help like, teach our teams how to do this stuff? So they almost accidentally turned into a training company. Uh, so a lot of the developers there, the, the people who are actually doing the real work, began to do some fairly informal training, found out that they were good at it, and began to really embrace it. Uh, and then they reached out to me because they were just full. They couldn't, couldn't keep up with demand. Um, and it was really funny because I, I, you know, when they approached me, they're like, eh, every couple of months, maybe you'll do, you know, like three days of training for us on site in St. Louis. We'll barely impact your schedule. And I don't think I've done fewer than three of these a month since then. It's been insane demand, and it's only gotten more crazy since then. Um, but uh, we typically do on site work. Um, we do open enrollment classes, you know, for anybody that wants to sign up. We also do uh, like on site corporate training. Um, and it's a pretty even mix of both. Uh, and of course, of late, it's been both Angular 1 and Angular 2. For the last couple of years, it was primarily Angular 1. But the Angular 2 demand has uh, has matched up now with Angular 1. But the funny thing is, is Angular 1's not slowing down. Right. Um, so we're uh, we're doing both and having a blast. It is so rewarding. I, I If you'd asked me, you know, five years ago, what do you think you'll spend the bulk of your time doing? I would not have said it would be, you know, traveling the globe, being an Angular instructor. But it is so great. I've, I've really loved it. So who's easier to train, the guy fresh out of school or the guy who has 15, 20 years experience? Um, well, the guy with 15 or 20 years experience, that person um, often understands what it means to develop software, you know, in a very um, like high level conceptual philosophical sense, they get that. Um, but they often don't have the most up-to-date skills. And of course, if they've spent you know, 20 years on the back end, things compared to the environment that we live and breathe, they're fairly stable and sane. Whereas our world, it's like, uh, oh, we were using that tool last week. This week, no one uses that tool anymore. We got a whole new process for that. Uh, oh, by the way, the language you thought you were gonna be learning, we just completely changed it. Um, I find that fun and exhilarating, and you know it's one of the reasons I'm in the career that I'm in. It's because I like that level of change and that uh, that pace. Uh, but it can be it can be a real culture shock uh, or future shock for uh, for a lot of these folks. But if they can get past that, then they're often fantastic to train. Now, now they're often in a tough spot because it, you know two weeks ago their manager came to them and said you know. Uh, Hey Karen, I know that you've been programming, you know, these back-end systems for the last 10 years and you're really good at it. Congratulations, you're now a front-end developer. Go figure out what that means. Right. And that that person often ends up in our class. We don't really have a typical student, but if we did, that would probably be pretty close to it. Um, the other side of that, the the folks that are just out of school, they don't a lot of times they don't have that depth, but they have pretty recent skills. And so it's really uh, part of our challenge is to kind of meet people where they live and, and be relevant and meaningful to their level of experience, their background. Um, and we, we work really hard on that. Uh, for private training, I always conduct like a pre-class interview with, uh, with multiple people that I'm going to be training um, because I want to know who are your people? What do you need to know? What are you going to try to do with this? What are the backgrounds of those people? Um, because you know, I'm I'm old in this game now. I've done a lot of things across a lot of different platforms, so I can usually build bridges between wherever they are and wherever they're trying to go. It's harder with open enrollment, but even with there, uh, like the first 20 minutes of a class, it's you know introductions, and I'll try to suss out a little bit of that background j again, so that I can I can be relevant to existing experience and help them base where they go on where they've been. So as part of that discovery, uh, are you finding with Angular 2 it's easier to bring in the .NET and Java developers into the front end because they're able to use TypeScript? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. The, um, the, the folks who've been doing JavaScript for a while are other dynamic languages. Um, if you drop types on them, they're like, oh, we were always told types were bad and types were slow, you know, they slow down our productivity. We, we live fast and loose here in dynamic right. languages world. But the Java and C-sharp folks are like, oh, thank God, finally some sanity has been brought to this space. Um, and neither of those people are right or wrong. It's just, right. it, it may be a different way for them to, uh, to approach things. Uh, one of the things I really like and impressed by about TypeScript is that it once you kind of get over that conceptual hurdle of, wait a minute, my dynamic language now has types added to it, it actually doesn't get in your way if you use it effectively. Um, and if you if you embrace what it can do for you, you find that it doesn't slow you down. So uh, I often get to watch people have that you know realization, wait a minute, this isn't so bad at all. I, I was told this was going to be terrible, but it turns out this is actually kind of handy, and it's not getting nearly as much in my way as I thought it might. The, the places where it's getting in my way are places that would have been just latent bugs waiting to bite me, you know, uh, two days, two months down the road. So what part of that training experience is the most gratifying to you? Um, there, are, there are several, I'm actually thinking of several different uh, particular situations that have happened. Um, folks that are very new to, to this world when they see I can build a real thing and, and it's not just all hypothetical. I'm not going to have to spend the next six months learning things before I can actually deliver something of value for myself, for my team, for my company, uh, for whatever organization I work with. They very quickly realize, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I'm half a day into this and I can already see how I'm going to be able to use this. Right. Um, the other thing that's often rewarding is several times I'll have students in class that they've been trying to kind of make it on their own. They've, they've been off in the weeds, you know, looking at random YouTube videos or whatever. Um, and, and they come in somewhat demoralized. And, and I kind of help them homogenize the little bits of knowledge they've already got, connect a lot of the pieces. Um, because they've often picked up a huge amount of syntax and, right. you know, stack overflow posts so they've cobbled together into something that works, but they have no idea why. Right. And I can fill in the meaning behind that and connect those dots, and you can see it happening. When they're like, I've actually had people like interrupt class, just like, oh, I get it. I understand now why they do that thing that I thought was so weird. It totally makes sense now. And that's really rewarding. I, I, I often have people, we, we take feedback from everybody that comes through the class. So we always have very comprehensive feedback. And you see over and over again people saying, you know, I was using this stuff maybe for, for months. But I had no idea why I was doing the things I was told to do, and this class really filled in the why. So we've learned to, to turn up the dial on that stuff, that things you might think, well, nobody really needs to understand the, the behind the scenes, you know, the whole reason we're using a framework is you don't have to worry about that stuff. That is not true. People really want to understand it. Even if they don't realize they want to understand it, having that knowledge of why things work the way that they do is absolutely critical uh, to a lot of people's ability to use this stuff effectively. Um, and I find it really rewarding when you see those epiphanies begin to happen, just bang, 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 like that one after the other. It's great. Nice. Can't can we um, talk about um, your conversation with the Angular team? Like, sort of go into bigger vision of like Angular and training. Sure. In well, general. Yeah, and one of the things I want to talk about too is is um, are you going to start adapting your training with the Angular CLI? Absolutely. Because that's something too. Because that was talked about heavily today yeah. and yesterday, um, and I think a lot of training will be simplified. It definitely uh, by having that because it gives you the starting point that's a um, verified starting point mm -hmm. I think and then you can go through and explain to people why right um, so do, do you see a lot of reconfiguration of your training or is it just another step well there certainly will be but but fortunately uh, especially on the angular 2 side um, we are in constant like iteration and refinement on that. We just accepted a long time ago and embraced a long time ago that there was never going to be like, oh, we're done with the curriculum now. It has settled down and we're finished. Even in the Angular One world, we, we are still constantly revisiting that. Um, both, uh, both curricula right now have approximately like 50 example steps within them um, that are Inter, interlinked but not heavily dependent on one another so it's literally like 50 to 60 tiny little applications that demonstrate a feature or a combination of features um, and 
that that means that we have a huge amount of material that that you know we never get through all of it in class. We tell people right up front, we're giving you all this material. Please know that you can take it with you. You'll be able to use this later on. Um, but don't expect that in you know three very full, very short days, we're going to get through all of these things. Um, uh, with that said. Since we have so many steps and they're so very surgical, so very granular, we're constantly like adding new ones, refining the ones that are there, reordering the material. Uh, so for example, when dot component came into Angular 1.5, oh my god, it was it was like we, we had a little celebration and then we just revamped everything. Because right. even though we had pulled directives as far forward as we possibly could in the material, because we felt that was such a central idea in Angular, when dot component was added, the helper was added, so many things got so much cleaner and simpler. Now that directive material is still in there, but it's now in, it's further down. It's like details that we don't have to address right up front. And now literally within the first five to 10 steps, we are talking about components. Um, so with, uh, to go back to your original question around like the CLI, early versions of, of these, uh, of the, especially of the Angular 1 class, were very tooling heavy because they absolutely had to be. If right. you wanted to do anything, you had to get all of this tool chain installed. Um, and that was often the biggest stumbling block for people, especially in corporate environments where everything is just like sealed in concrete. Right. And the idea, you want to install software on a machine? I'm like, yeah, these are developers. They're going to need tools. Well, we're going to have to go get permission from you know the VP in order to... Uh, and that was crazy. So we, we pared down that material as much as we possibly could so the minimum number of tools would get us started. And we had that problem really solved in the Angular 1 environment. Then Angular 2 comes along and we have that problem all over again because you really aren't doing actual Angular 2 development the way I think it's going to be done in the real world unless you have a lot of tooling installed. I mean, TypeScript alone, you've got. Right. It's not, that's not going to be running in your browser. So there's work you've got to do to get it to, to be ES5 in the browser. So a lot of that tooling problem came back. Now, we've, we've managed to solve most of it, but you can't make all of it go away. Right. The CLI will be a godsend for that. That's um, fantastic. Because we'll be able to say, yes, there's still tooling involved, but here is the blessed official way that we're going to do it. Now, we already know that we're going to take that CLI work and walk people through the product that the CLI is delivering to you because we don't want we don't want this to be a mystery box. We don't want people to think, oh, I must go through this through this strange tool that does things that I don't understand in order to develop an application. No, we'll we'll take them through what the tool is doing so that they actually understand what's happening. Um, but we are definitely going to leverage the tool because it it means we'll have more time to teach them Angular as opposed to 15 random tools. Do you find yourself reaching out to like Hans and, and Misko and those guys to get kind of a, a, a peek ahead of what's coming so you can start doing your training or is it something that um, you have to wait, try and get the training out as quick as possible? Um, like earlier today, for example, I mean, the conferences like this are so fantastic. I, I, I think I've been to a couple of actual sessions. I'm here for the hallway track. I'm here for, I'm here to talk to these folks one-on-one -on -one because it is so valuable. Um, I had the opportunity, uh, it was so nice of, nice of him to do it. Uh, a few weeks back, I had an opportunity to sit down with Brad Green for, for an hour. He's fantastic. And just, yeah, oh, I mean, I'm a number one member of the Brad fan club. Um, and, and have that kind of conversation with him. Because I told him right up front, I said, every minute that I spend with you does unbelievable good for my students because it gives me insight, it gives me information that I can convey to them uh, that will be directly useful to them. I said, no pressure or anything, yeah. you know. Uh, well, unless you could trust really an authority useful. too, right? Absolutely. It's coming from Brad. Yeah. Um, so earlier today, we did like a big version of that. Uh, it, it's funny how this happened. Um, the Oasis Digital you know, crew of instructors that do the Angular Bootcamp work, we realized a couple of weeks ago, this is going to be the first time we were all physically in the same location. So we're like, we got to take advantage of that. There's the fair day in the middle, and that means that we'll have an opportunity to carve out some time and really like dig in. Because like I said, we are constantly iterating and refining on the material. We really care about the stuff being up to date and relevant to people. So we were going to all get in the same room and just work on this stuff uh, and not have to fight to do it remotely. But we very quickly realized the very conversations that we were going to be having would be so useful to so many other people, and we would love to have their input as well. Um, so we reached out to, to the guys at Thought Ram, reached out to the guys at Angular class, and began uh, talk, you know talked to Jules on the Angular team, told her what we had in mind. She's like, yes, I want to be part of that conversation. I'll send people to be part of that conversation. So the, by the time it was all done, we had, you know, 15, 20 people in a room, far more than just us, just, just the Angular instructors or the Angular Bootcamp instructors having just a great conversation all about these sorts of things. For example, 
Angular 2, as wonderful as it is, it is very deliberately agnostic about things like data architecture, how heavily you use observables, you know, whether Redux is a thing you bring into your world or right. not, um, or whether you use you know, the, the uh, inputs and outputs event model to send things up and down the bucket brigade, you know, all, all things like that. Well, we have to be able to convey opinions and advice and guidance to our students. The great thing about Angular 2 is it's almost more of a library now than a framework. We can get through the Angular 2 portion of our training pretty quick. quickly. Yeah. But then beyond that, there's a these these people are there to learn how to build real applications that work in the real world. So what does it mean to use Angular in the real world? We're not just there to teach them syntax, we're there to teach them meaning and yeah. relevance. Um, and that's what that conversation was about. And uh, I wish it could have gone 10 hours because it was so useful. Um, yeah, we, we wrapped up by saying, you know, this is the beginning of this conversation. This is nowhere near the end. Uh, so Stephen Fluin, who's uh, new to the developer advocacy at, at, in Google, uh, and on you know, Jules is part of the team, uh, he, he was kind enough to attend. He's got all the names. He's going to put together like a group, and we're going to continue to have this conversation. Um, some people are surprised that I'm, I'm like, you know, reaching out to ThoughtRam, reaching out yeah. to Angular Class, because aren't those your competitors? I mean, there is so much to do in this it's space. It's about the community. It, absolutely. Uh, it absolutely is. We we know that a rising tide lifts all boats. The better we get at this stuff by the instructors, the better we get at it, the better the community, the more the community benefits, and there is approximately an infinite amount of this work to do. Right. So I've actually handed off uh, work, and I know we've had the same thing happen to us because there just aren't enough of us to go around. Yeah. You know, that fantastic problem to have, um, but I'm booked through like November at this point. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's a good problem to have. Yeah, it absolutely is. Awesome. I, I was joking with uh, with Michael at Oasis. I'm like, are you sure? I mean, let's just give NGConf money and then not tell them anything about us because I'm not sure we can handle any more business right now. Can't we just be a stealth sponsor? It's like, no, we're going to have a banner. <laughs> I was joking, of course, but, uh, but it really is crazy how much business there is. Um, one of the nice things is we'll get new instructors out of this yeah. conference. Uh, you know, one of the banners that we have up at the booth, the sponsor booth, is all about the class. That's the long banner that's there that you would think, okay, the they, they want to get classes. There's another half size banner that's like, and if you want to be an instructor, please talk to us. Um, and two of the folks that came to that meeting earlier today, there's a good chance they'll become instructors for our class. Fantastic. So I, yeah, it, it, th that alone made it worth all of us coming here. So um, nice. yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about that. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. Oh, it's to great talk to talk to you. Yeah, I, uh, as I was talking about uh, the meeting with Brad, at the end of it, um, as we were finishing lunch, Brad's like, you really like this, don't you? I'm like, yeah, I really like this. This is a great thing to do. I, I, I love software development. I love building big systems. But it turns out that having a chance to directly uh, communicate these ideas, these concepts, these tools, these techniques to people and see them being able to, to use them in their real work uh, is fantastic. And I've had at least five former students find me at this conference and say how useful that stuff has been. And that that makes it all worth it. Put it's it on the gratified list. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks. I really Thank appreciate you. the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Yeah.